In JavaScript, constructors allow you to create multiple objects of the same type. Each time you execute a constructor, a new object is created, and that object shares characteristics of other objects that are created from the same constructor. In this movie, we're going to take a look at five important concepts that can help you to understand constructors and how they work. Now, first off, as a reminder, let's look at a line of code which invokes a constructor. Right here is a simple line of code. We declare a variable and we set it equal to a call to a function. So we're invoking this function, but we're invoking it with the keyword new. And that's what determines a constructor. That will return an object and it will be referenced by this variable. So with that reminder, let's go ahead and take a look at these five important concepts. And then we will illustrate those concepts to help you to understand them better. So first off, the keyword new is critical in a constructor. New actually determines whether or not a function is a constructor. You can write a function but not use it as a constructor until you add the keyword new in front of it. Second, a constructor creates a new object and that object is bound to this, meaning when we use this inside the, the function that is the constructor, it refers to that new object that is created. So the keyword new causes that new object to be created. Third, the function is invoked. So all the code that's inside that function becomes invoked. And as mentioned, the value of this is equal to that new object. So anything we put inside that function that references this, it's going to act on that new object. The code inside of that function doesn't have to always act on that new object. It could be doing other things. It could be determining information. But when we use the value of this, then we're affecting that new object. Fourth, the constructor sets the new object's prototype to the prototype property of the constructor. So a function has a prototype property, and that points to an object. When you use that function as a constructor, it assigns that object as the prototype to the new object that is created. We'll illustrate this in just a moment. Finally, the fifth important concept is that it returns the new object. So the end result of a constructor is an object is returned. You receive an object back. The function just doesn't execute. It returns an object when it's done. Now, there is a way to override that. If you choose to return using the return keyword inside of the function, a non-primitive value, then that will take place of the new object that would normally be returned. So you can override that if you choose to. But it will automatically return the new object without you putting in a return keyword. All right, so let's illustrate these concepts. We'll take a look at the first two in the first example I'm going to use. Basically, that new is the part that determines whether a function is a constructor and the fact that it creates a new object which is bound to this. So I will jump to Sublime and we'll start looking at this. All right, let me remove this line. And first I'm gonna create a function. Now notice with this function, I have included an uppercase U to identify the function, the user's function. That's simply a convention in JavaScript that if you plan to use a function as a constructor, start it with an uppercase letter. That way, other people know its purpose. The reason that is important is that in some situations, if you use a constructor function without the keyword new, it can cause some issues. Now, this function, all it's going to do is log to the console the value of this. That's going to help us to see what this is bound to. Now, below it, create a user1 variable, and we'll set that equal to user. 
we'll simply invoke the function. And then we'll create a user2 and set that equal to the invoking of the function, but we'll invoke it with the keyword new so we can see the difference. All right, let's save that. Jump out, refresh this, and let's open the console and take a look at the results. So we invoked the function twice, one with the keyword new and one without. The first time we invoked it was without. Notice the value of this. We log to the console this. It is simply the window. It is the global object. Since I'm using JavaScript in a browser, that ends up being the window where the second object is users. So it created a new object of the type users and this was bound to it. So this points to that new object. Now let's look at the two variables we created. User1 is undefined. Notice that when I did not use the keyword new, that function did not act as a constructor. It did not return an object to be placed into that variable where user2, we do have an object. It's empty. There's not much to it except the prototype, but we did get a new object. All right, really quick, those five concepts again. New determines whether or not it's a constructor. It creates a new object, which is bound to this. We illustrated that. The function is invoked with the value of this equal to the new object. Let's take a look at that. So we're going to add to this a bit. Let me comment out the console.log statement. And now we're going to use this. Now remember, this points to that new object and set it equal to f name, which we're going to have that passed in. In fact, we're going to have two things passed into this function. And then this dot last name will be equal to l name. Now we need to expand. these statements down here. I'm going to pass in a first name and a last name. Notice in this case, I'm still not using the keyword new. In the second situation, I am. All right. Let's go ahead and save that. Jump back out, refresh, display the console. And let's take a look at our two variables. User 1 first. It is still undefined because we did not use the keyword new in front of it. Let's take a look at user 2 though. Now we have some content inside of this object. Notice we have a first name and we have a last name. So if we look at the code, this is referring to that new object. And in that new object, we're creating two properties a first name and a last name. The value of those two properties are the contents of what's been passed in. So we've illustrated those first three, three concepts. Now we're going to take a, take a look at the last two. It sets the new object's prototype to the prototype property of the constructor and it returns the object. So looking at opening the console again really quick. Let me do a DIR of the user's function. I want to just show you this displays the information about that function. Notice as we open it, it has certain properties. In JavaScript, functions are objects. And this has properties associated with it. Well, one of those properties is the prototype property. And that has something attached to it. That is what becomes the prototype of the new objects that are created. Let's take a look at it, an example that illustrates 
this a little better as well. So we'll keep our constructor function the same. Let's change this statement here and add a new to it. So we will actually create an object. We'll, this will become a constructor. Then below that, I'm going to do this. I'm going to add something to the prototype property of the constructor. I'm going to set full name equal to a function. And then we'll have it return this dot first name plus we'll concatenate these together this dot last name. So we've just added that to the prototype. Remember this prototype property contains the object that will become the prototype of the new objects that are created. All right, let's save that. Now notice also that user one is being created before I modify the prototype property. User two is, be, is being created after. Let's jump out, refresh. Now let's first take a look at user one dot full name. It returns Jay Madison. So notice that its prototype still has the full name method as a part of it, even though I added it after creating the object. User two, of course, the full name method works as well and returns its first and last name concatenated together. Now let's also take a moment and take a look at, do a DIR of users just so we can see how the prototype has changed. If we open that up, go down to the prototype property, open that up, notice we now have a full name method that's a part of this prototype property. And so that gets assigned to any objects that are created. Now one last thing we want to look at. Let's take a look at user one again and user two. And this time we'll open them up. We see the first name property, the last name property. If we look inside of its prototype, we can see the full name method. And that would be the same for user two as well. Full name method right there. So five important concepts of JavaScript constructors. The keyword new determines whether or not a function is a constructor. It creates a new object, which is bound to this. The function is invoked and the value of this is equal to the new object. So anything we do in the function that references this will affect that new object. It sets the new object's prototype to the prototype property of the constructor. And then finally, it returns that object. So those are the five important concepts that can help you understand JavaScript constructors. Hopefully you found that helpful. If you did, we'd appreciate you liking this video. You can also subscribe to our channel. We have new videos every week and you can receive additional help or information regarding JavaScript at our website, allthingsjavascript.com. Thanks for watching.